Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are gonna look at column profiling inside of Power BI Desktop. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. Column profiling, what is this? So this is a feature that was added into Power BI Desktop, specifically Power Query, a while ago. It actually just went GA inside of Power BI Desktop in the April 2019 version of Power BI Desktop, and they added some other items in there. So I just wanted to do a video to recap you know, what this was, how you can use it, why you should even use it, and just all some of the nuances of it. All right, enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and see what this is all about. All right, I'm inside of Power BI Desktop. As I mentioned, this is inside of Power Query. And when we get inside of Power Query, you are going to see what looks like like a bluish greenish bar underneath the actual title of the column. So previously this was a preview feature inside of Power BI Desktop. So if you didn't have that selected, you would have never seen this, but it's starting in the April 2019 build of Power BI Desktop, this will be available by default. And if we hover over that green bar, you're gonna see some initial information about that column. It's gonna call out valid columns, errors, and empties. So right away we can see the value of this and the why, right? So this gives us a quick glimpse at the quality and statistics of the individual columns for my tables. I'll come back to that as we look at, you know, other aspects of this, but just keep that in mind, right? This is about column statistics, uniqueness, you know, the, the state of my column and the data inside of that column at a high level glance. All right, continuing here, this is just, again, this is just preview information over each column. I can go in and I can check that. I can see how many are valid. I see how many errors there may be within the column and I can see how many are empty. If we go to the view tab, we can see additional options here that we can enable. First, first off is column quality. So if I select that, it's just going to expand what I had if I hovered over that actual bar. So I can you know, just see a, another visual information about that. Now I can also enable column distribution. And so this will actually show me how many distinct items I have and how many are unique and what that spread is. Where this really comes in handy is when we start talking about cardinality of a column, because that has direct play into how the compression of the VertiPak engine works. And so we usually wanna to get to lower cardinality. And what this means is the higher the cardinality, the more unique items we have in that column, the lower the cardinality, there are less distinct items, but there may be more of them, right? I may have two different categories, bikes and toys. And so they're two unique items, but I may have like a hundred items for each one of those. So that's low cardinality. High cardinality where would be like, maybe I have 60, unique items with inside of that column and they are all different. That's high cardinality. And so this specific view, the distribution, helps you understand what the cardinality of the column is and whether or not you may wanna consider, do I really need this column in my data set? That can help out with performance, it can help out with compression, it, it just helps a lot of things. We wanna reduce the number of high cardinality columns in our data set. All right, the other column we have here is column profile. And so here we can actually see specific items for those columns. So we get more, we get more statistics for that given column and we can scroll down a little bit and we'll see other specific items. So just at a high glance, what is this column all about? And then we also get more further detail on the distribution. And so we can see those unique items. Let me go over to product category key and we'll go through and here we can actually see that distribution at a bigger scale here. What's cool is I can actually, when I highlight or hover over one of those columns, I can actually remove that given item. And when I remove that, it's gonna update the filter of that given column, so watch this. So I just said remove that item, it is now a filtered row, and so that is being removed from my data set. And then we can go ahead, it's just a step in Power Query, right? So I can remove it and it comes back. All right, we'll highlight that again. So again, we can see count, we can see error, empty, distinct, unique, zero, or not a number, all sorts of different things. The averages, standard deviation, even odds. So just different breakouts from a number statistics. So let's look at a text item and then we can see 
other items that might be here. And again, I can write, I can hover over it and then I can go ahead and remove that or keep it, things of that nature. So it's really handy with dealing with understanding that data at a quick glance from a Power Query perspective, very cool. We can go over to our fact table and we can see this as well. So we'll see you know, what that distribution looks like for each of these columns at a high level. I can see what's going on. Doesn't look like I have any errors. Date columns, I can see what that distribution is. We can see the spread. Dates are interesting because you may also see if you had a combined date time, you would actually see that the distribution of this would be very wide and you would have a lot of unique items. And so that would be an indicator, a visual indicator to you that you may wanna split those up or just get rid of time altogether. So the column profiling aspects of this inside of Power Query just help you visualize that and give you some visual cues that you may need to do some work to optimize your data from a Power Query side before we even get to the data model. All right, so what does an error look like? Because all of these, they're showing that there's no errors. So let's take a look at, so I'm gonna go ahead and introduce an actual error in here. All right, so this is obviously not right. This is a number column because it's a key column, but let's go ahead and save that. Go back to Power BI Desktop. And this is in our subcategory, so we'll do that. And right away we can see now, based on the preview, that we have an error. And so this error itself, let's go dig in a little more. We can see that there's one error and whatnot. We've encountered a problem, so it's not gonna give us this column distribution. We're not gonna see any more information here. And so if I scroll all the way down, let's refresh the preview and we'll see the error all the way at the bottom. And so what I can do here, let's go here, and then I can say remove errors. And again, it's gonna do that Power Query step over on the right. I actually see that I have removed errors. And if we go look at Advanced Editor, we can actually see that as well. So it actually removed that for me. So without this column profiling feature, just working with large data sets, I may not have seen that. And so I wouldn't have known that I had an error that I needed to go remove until I had tried to refresh it or tried to actually work with it from a data model perspective. So the other thing to note here is that at the bottom, you'll see that column profiling is based on the top 1000 rows. So just doing a sample of the data. That could be useful if we know that we've got specific items or if you've got small dimensions, things of that nature would be really good. But what if we've got a larger table? How do I, I don't wanna, I wanna see what the profile is of the entire column. So what you can do is down below, we can select that and then we can say base it on the entire data set. And when I do that, it's actually gonna go through and do all the data. In this case, these tables aren't very large and so it's pretty much working with all the data as it is. And so internet sales, we can come back. And again, we can flip this to use the whole data. And now it's going through, it takes a little longer to actually refresh that information. So that's the thing to consider here is that if you have a large table, Choosing to do the profile over the entire column may take a while to actually get. So just be aware of that, but it will come back and then it will show me all of those items. And in here, I do actually have more rows than a thousand. And so it's actually going through all of that data to profile it. So that's very cool. All right, column profiling. Are you using it? Do you love it? Has it helped you working with data? I wanna know, leave it down in the comments below and share it out with everyone else. Also, if you have tips or examples of where this has helped or what specifically you're looking for, I'd love to hear that as well. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.